So you've decided to insulate your old home. You're probably wondering, do you need a vapor barrier? And the answer of course is, it depends. In this video, we're talking all about vapor barriers and vapor retarders when it comes to remodels and retrofits of older homes and buildings, whether you need a vapor barrier, and where the vapor control layer should be located. Let's get into it. Now, before we even talk about vapor barriers and insulation, we're assuming that you've addressed all of the potential bulk water issues and leaks in the building. If you haven't done that or haven't addressed bulk water, you need to prioritize that first. Go and check out this video up here, which explains exactly why you need to tackle water before you tackle vapor or insulation. So let's talk about walls. Do you need a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder? The answer is maybe, as it's highly dependent on the type of insulation that you specify, where the insulation is located within the assembly, the type of wall construction that you're working with, and the climate that you're building in. Now, just as a quick refresher, a vapor barrier or a vapor retarder is designed to slow down or stop the movement of water vapor through diffusion. Diffusion is a function of surface area, and it acts very evenly on the building. Vapor moves on a gradient from areas of high concentrations to lower concentrations, and from warm to cold. So when we use a vapor retarder, the goal is to prevent condensation on surfaces or to prevent raising interior relative humidity. Now, diffusion shouldn't be confused with air transport or air leakage. Air has the ability to transport a heck of a lot more moisture, and so sometimes our vapor retarder also needs to be our air barrier, and we need to treat those very differently. Now that we have that out of the way, if we've insulated the cavities of the walls of an existing wood-framed house with bat insulation, let's say we're using rock wool or fiberglass, and that's the only insulation in the wall assembly, we might need a vapor retarder somewhere in there because rock wool and fiberglass are highly vapor permeable. If this wall assembly was in a colder climate, let's say IECC climate zones 5 or greater, then we would want a vapor retarder on the interior side of that wall to slow down moisture from the interior that could condense on the back side of the sheathing during the winter time. Now notice how I say vapor retarder and not vapor barrier. We want something that allows some moisture to pass through to allow for drying when moisture is moving in the opposite direction during the summertime. So we don't want to use any polyethylene or class 1 vapor retarders in this assembly because it could trap moisture, especially if we're planning to air condition that interior space. We also want that vapor retarder to be airtight because again, air can transport moisture at rates that are orders of magnitude higher than diffusion, and so having a vapor retarder on the interior side of that wall will be ineffective at preventing condensation if it's not airtight. Now I should emphasize that we do not want any vapor retarders in most cases on the outside of that wall since we need the ability to dry to the exterior. We don't want moisture to get trapped in the sheathing, and so you should avoid impermeable products like ice and water shield for the building wrap. Well, what if the house is in a warmer, humid climate like in Florida? Do we need a vapor retarder? The answer is yes, but not in the location that you might think. If we have warm, moisture-laden air on the outside of the building throughout basically the entire year, and we're air conditioning the interior space, we want a vapor retarder to be on the outside of the building, not on the inside. We have to stop that warm, moisture-laden air from getting into the cavity at its source. We do not want any vapor retarders or impermeable finishes or materials on the inside of that exterior wall in warm, humid climates since we can easily get condensation on the backside of these surfaces, and that moisture has no ability to dry out, and we tend to see severe mold issues in these types of assemblies. So everything within the cavity space and inwards should be completely vapor permeable to allow for drying. Now, just like in a colder climate, you want this vapor retarder to be airtight to prevent air leakage from bypassing that vapor retarder. And so, one of the best ways to get both a vapor retarder and an air barrier is to specify a low permeance, self-adhered, or peel-and-stick WRB on the outside of the walls. And in this case, ice and water shield works great. Chances are, if you're insulating or remodeling an existing home, you're going to be taking off the old siding in many cases, and this is an excellent opportunity to specify the right type of water-resistive barrier so it can serve as your air barrier and your vapor control layer. Products like Zip System Sheathing also work pretty well in warmer climates because you get the benefits of a water control layer, an air barrier when the seams are taped, and the OSB functions as a very decent vapor retarder. Now we can also design the wall so that you don't need a vapor retarder or a vapor barrier. 
If part of the insulation strategy is to use exterior rigid insulation, that helps to keep the condensing surface of the sheathing closer to interior temperatures and relative humidity conditions. And so if we insulate on the exterior wall assembly in a cold climate with enough insulation outside of the cavity, we don't need an interior vapor barrier or a vapor retarder. This exterior insulation strategy also provides better redundancy and increases long-term durability since these components have better drying potential. If we're working in a warm, humid climate, the rigid insulation itself can also serve as the exterior vapor retarder if we use the right type of insulation product like polyiso, XPS foam, or EPS foam. Any of the rigid foam products are going to be good vapor retarders. You can also use products like rigid rock wool, but you need to make sure that the weather resistive barrier is also a vapor retarder since the rock wool is vapor and air permeable. And so if condensation does form, it'll be on the outside of the water control air and everything from the cavity inwards should still be allowed to dry unrestricted to the interior. Now we have come across a few interesting cases where the interior must be preserved for historical purposes or it's just not in the scope of work because the building is still being occupied and exterior insulation is not in the budget. How do we address air and vapor control? This building condition is really tricky, especially if you're dealing with the backside of lath and plaster and irregular building conditions. We take a spray applied vapor variable liquid membrane called Viscon from ProClima. Not sponsored, we just use this product a lot. This is a flexible acrylic product that's a class 2 vapor retarder when conditions are relatively dry, let's say below 60% relative humidity, and vapor open when conditions are wet. And we spray this liquid applied membrane on the backside of the lath and plaster and against the studs and top plates and building transitions to give us the benefits of a vapor retarder and an air barrier while allowing for drying if more moisture does enter the cavity, either by diffusion or air leakage. This is basically a liquid applied smart vapor retarder, and the fact that we can spray this product into the nooks and crannies of the studs is really beneficial and it cuts down on labor and install errors. Then we can just insulate the cavity as usual, resheathe the building, put down a high quality water control layer, and install our cladding over a drainage gap. We need to be careful about insulating and sealing old buildings, especially when we start applying vapor control layers and insulation and other impermeable materials. We do not want to end up with a mold problem or a moisture problem as this often costs tens of thousands of dollars to remediate and it's a lot cheaper to do it right the first time. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more weekly building science videos and head over to our website at asiri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics. Links will be in the description below. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.